So we returned from our trip across the pond and drove home from the airport in a blizzard. We weren't sure how much snow we were going to get, but I knew if I woke up and it was still snowing, we'd have to head to the off-grid cabin like we always do for the first big storm of the year. So without even unpacking our luggage, we got breakfast and loaded our gear for a cabin overnight. Oh, finally. We've been waiting months for this. This is the first real storm we've probably got. I mean, we've got at least six inches, probably closer to eight by now. I'm gonna fire up the snowmobiles for the first time this year. Oh, finally. It's finally winter. red house to pick up an old sled. Uh, Jared's gonna plow it today. And trekked in through the untouched snow that had piled up quite a bit by now. The roof is just... Well, it's probably about a foot of snow by now. Definitely a trek in. I'm more curious about getting out of here because once you pack this stuff down, it gets real slick but coming in wasn't so bad, but it is deep. <laughs> you can see the tracks. Ah, oh, this is just incredible. Unfortunately, the temperature's gonna rise and we got rain coming the next couple days, which is such a bummer, but we're gonna enjoy this while it's here. for better. I wish we had gotten more. It takes a while to heat the little place up, and so we try to stay warm with other things while the stove gets hot. But once the coals form, there's nothing like walking inside that cozy cocoon. Fun doing a spring cleaning. It was just in here. It's so cool to read this now. I kind of 
wish I had almost read it before, but so he's living in Paris mm -hmm. and he's got uh, like an old apartment that apparently isn't very expensive, and, but he works in like a hotel room that he rents out just for like someplace different, I guess, apparently. I worked in a room that looked across all the roofs and the chimneys of the high hill of the quarter and it was a pleasure. The fireplace drew well in the room and it was warm and pleasant to work. I brought mandarins and roasted chets, chestnuts to the room and paper packets. Literally and sounds like you. <laughs> <laughs> and you would bring that. I know. And I, w I would eat those when I was hungry. I was always hungry with the walking and the cold and the working. Up in the room I had a bottle of Kirsch that we had brought back from the mountains and I took a drink of Kirsch when I would get toward the end of a story or toward the end of a day's work. When I was through working for the day, I put the notebook or the paper away in the drawer of the table and put any mandarins that were left in my pocket. They would freeze if they were left in the room at night. It was wonderful to walk down the long flights of stairs knowing I'd had good luck working. I always worked until I had something done, and I always stopped when I knew what was going to happen next. That way I could be sure of what of going on the next day. I always remembered that. I loved that. Just like stop when you have momentum so that you know you can come back and get right into it. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? Not happy. It's kind of like... <sighs> we can't win with the mice.
So Allie made homemade coffee cake the night before. And after some morning chores, we savored every bite before heading off into the wonderland. Oh, God. So good. <laughs> It's always a treat when you get a big storm where the snow sticks to the trees. And not long after, there's clear blue skies and golden light. It creates a very dynamic environment. Oh, man, if we had this thing going right now, that would be unreal. Do have the light strong. Oh, baby. We're gonna have to break all that. The wind is strong. It's gonna be a wonderful day. Wow. <laughs> wow, it's seriously a winter wonderland out here. Look at these light rays. Them off though. Come on. This is nuts. Allie and I used to go for more daily walks the winter we first met, when there was a lot less going on. But in the last couple years, things have snowballed, and it's become a lot harder to find the time. But in the end, taking an hour out of the day to get outside, feel the air, and get the blood moving is more important than anything that might be taking its place. Take care of your body and your mind first, and everything else will follow. While Allie cleared off the rest of the skylights to bring in the sunshine, I got started in retrieving some of the cherry wood we had cut up back in December. Even though we have a ton of chores back home at our full-time residence, there's something about working outside here and taking care of this little place that feels so satisfying.
I got it on this one. Not right in the middle. See? So big, yeah. And we kept with our favorite winter tradition and cold plunged in the little stream. This time focusing on staying in as long as possible and controlling our breathing. This time last year, we were still working on the inside and outside of the cabin, and we didn't have it set up anywhere near as cozy as it is now. So to arrive for the first storm and experience the full glory of this special place as we always dreamed was a great feeling. This whole cabin property has been quite the memorable journey. But that's what you want in life. Not a straight flat road to nowhere, but a dirt mountain road that dips and winds and keeps you guessing. And in the end, gives you a story worth telling. the uh, tilt for the boom, like the 